Idology is excited to welcome Hee Joon Han today. We're 95% excited, maybe 5% scared. Oh, come on. What could happen here? What can happen here? <laughs> You sing great. Oh, thank you. You have yeah, a beautiful yeah. voice. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, oh yes, I was really. shocked. Randy's response to you in particular, oh my God, there's an Asian guy and he can sing well was such a shocker. He, his <laughs> jaw was almost like swinging, like he was expecting you to be a joke. And uh -huh. I just wonder how you felt and if you sort of had that in your brain of like, well, a lot of times this show has portrayed Asian men as, as sort of a joke and not in on the joke. <laughs> Stereotype towards Asian is something that we can't just get rid of in one day. Right. I knew they're gonna have that stereotype, but I was kind of thinking, you know what, maybe I can use this stereotype to shock people. Yeah. When your expectations are low, you can actually blow people just like that. That was actually my strategy, using my stereotype. So I'm not really offended by anything like that. What was your goal going into the competition? Were you thinking like, I'd like to flip that stereotype on its head? Were you thinking like, I'd actually like to win this competition? I just start off this competition for my kids with nonprofit organization and this only reason why I started off this competition to help them out. I've heard you say that before, that you did it for your kids. What exactly does that mean? Is this a program that runs on donations? Because of me being in this show, we got so much amount of donations and all the other uh, exposures that local TV and newspaper will pay attention to us now. Do you envision yourself going back to work there eventually? Of course, I mean, you know, it's something that I really, really belong, but not. I'm not gonna go there every day like I used to, but I'm just, I really wanna help them out by doing my own stuff and helping that from outside, just like how I'm doing right now, interviewing you, and so many people watching well, this show. I think it's the biggest show on the internet, personally. I, I think it is the <laughs> hugest, <laughs> Thing ever. What's the name of the organization? Because we haven't said it out loud, so uh, if we're trying to get a little exposure for it. We should. Thank you so much. It's Mirai, M I L A L dot U S. You can check it out. Maybe you can subtitle right here. It's moving. It's a nonprofit organization with people with disability. You're a funny guy from your first interview with Ryan. Your face is this small. My face is that size? You're almost so dry, it's like, is he just sort of semi floating through space and kind of funny and doesn't know it? But Clearly you're funny and you know it. Uh -huh. um, it's a weird mix with a show like Idol that is very earnest. It's right. an earnest show. I'm earnest about Idol. I take every note and every song choice super seriously. And I think it's unusual to see someone come in and be funny. Did you worry about that at all? Had you watched a lot of Idol prior to the season and were you thinking like, how am I gonna navigate this being a funny guy and yet not have people think that I'm not taking it seriously? Well, Mike, you sure do watch the show really carefully. <laughs> I'm, I'm funny and I know it, and I, I'm sexy and I know it. <laughs> right. Whenever you walk into that door, you're not thinking about how am I going to attract the judge or anything like that. You just go and sing. Right. Like, only only thing that's going through my mind is just doing the best of what I can do for being funny and being myself and singing at the same time. Tell me a little bit about Group Browns, working with Richie Law. I don't know how they do it in a cowboy town, but this is not how... We break it down, man. Watching him like <laughs> try and get you to do like sort of a box step type thing. Was your mindset really like, oh my God, how am I gonna deal with this situation without strangling this guy? Or were you playing it up a little <laughs> bit? Was it like a, a heightened you? I think you're the first guy who mentioned his name, not as Cowboy. Okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> he was a tough guy to work with. He was a really, really genuine and sweet guy. He really wanted to do this for the rest of his life. But when it comes down to working together, he didn't listen. He was just talking, talking. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we are all going home. <laughs> right. And I'm, it's just past my mind. It's like, if I'm just going to go home like this, I'm just going to make a bigger scene in the American Idol. <laughs> Me, J. Ron, Philip was established a long time ago be before Rich came in. And we we're like, oh my God, we sound really great. Oh, now we just need one more MIT, most international team. We're just looking for like brownish guy because we have white, black, and yellow. Right. But you know, we had no choice. He came in and then he just ruined the whole thing, all whole plans. I'm thinking personally like, oh my God, if I'm just gonna go home like that, I'm gonna make a funniest sin in the freaking <laughs> biggest sin. And then I just brought all the camera crew. Oh my God, we're having a situation here. And then it just, that's what I did. There were so many steps that Richie Law told us. I learned like every step in this whole entire world. He was trying to, do his best, we're trying to do our best, so it just didn't collide. Yeah. But you know, best of luck to you, Richie. You're a really great guy. And Philip doesn't seem like a choreographed dance guy either. I mean, he couldn't even handle himself. Like, he had a kidney stone. <laughs> right. he, I'm, not, I'm not even sure right. he has one kidney or two kidneys. Maybe he has three. Like, he couldn't even There's handle himself. a lot of stones himself. up there. Yeah. You don't want to take a step when, you you're, when you're peeing stone out, right? right? I also loved your apology to his mother. I've talked a lot of oh. craps about Richie. I'm really sorry to your parents. <laughs> That was a classic moment, which I think he was having like an earnest response to an apology that felt a little bit 
little I mean, cheeky. <laughs> okay. What really happened was I was really genuine to apology right. itself. And when I was doing apology, his mom actually came into the camera. I had no idea she was there. <laughs> then she came in, she was hugging him and all that. And then I was like sitting right next to him, just watching them hugging. And then after 20 hours of hugging, they just ran out of the camera. And then I was just following them. I just literally went back to the camera and I said, I was just kidding, I still had cowboys. That's what I said right. on the cowboy. But they cut it out and they just show <laughs> apology to um, Richie Law. But you know, I was really sincere. I, w I felt really sorry. Once we get to the live rounds, you're kind of known as this funny guy who can also sing. And I thought your first three song choices were kind of really serious ballads. How much were you thinking about trying to get that part of your personality into the music or were you trying to view them as like separate tracks? Like I can be funny when I'm done talking to Ryan, but I want to seriously, seriously sing these ballads. This is behind the scene and behind all of you, you know, but the song for you that I just did the last week was actually my first choice for the first week of the performance. Ken and Nigel, the great producer of Mike and I, I love them so much. They're like the most genuine guy you can ever meet. They um, suggest me a song, Angels by Billy Joel, and I instantly fell in love with the song. Beautiful lyrics, beautiful song, beautiful melody, but it was me who couldn't pull it off. And the second choice, All Is Fair In Love, it's one of those songs where I just can't deny not to sing. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. But again, it was my fault. I couldn't pull it off really well, so. I thought that was one of your best performances on the show. I oh, thought that was a good one. Thank I you. thought Jimmy was a little tough on you the night after. Oh, you know? I don't care about Jimmy. <laughs> but, um. A writer takes his pen to write the words again. Right Here Waiting was the most trickiest part of my uh, journey because we have to pick a song from 1989. It was either that one or If You Don't Know Me By Now by Simply Red. Okay. I sang in front of Jimmy and Jimmy liked right here waiting. I sang it and didn't get the great feedback. It was just the wrong song, wrong time, not a great performance for me. And that's when I realized, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna go home. So my has just so much fun in this competition. Right. And um, that's when I took Billy Jones, my life. That's just much too slow for me. And I wanna dance! Where did that idea evolve from and how did you feel watching it back? Was it what you wanted it to be? Three of the first performance, it was never by my choice. Without even me noticing, I was controlled by other people, controlled by all the medias, controlled by all the critics. So you were trying to react to everything around I you was, and be yes. what? I was trying to react to it saying that this is just not my life. I'm going back to who I was and no one can say anything about it because this is my life and you guys have no idea what I'm going through at this point. So just back off. Keep it to yourself, it's my life. The only thing that I can change my mind, if I can go back to the time, I would not only take off the tuxedo, but I will also take off the pants. The other thing that had happened was the package that preceded it, you with Tommy Hilfiger. Madonna. Madonna. Okay, now what about a man? Michael Bolton. Do you feel like you were disrespectful a little bit? And do you think maybe that colored how Jimmy and Steven were giving you feedback? He, June, came out and disrespected the entire process. When you're sitting right across from Tommy Hilfiger and when there's 20 cameras around you, he's not gonna literally change your lifestyle just like that. <laughs> In 20 minutes, he just can't do that. Right. It's a TV show. Yeah. And now my job is not to accept the fact that Tommy Hilfiger will dramatically change my <laughs> life as a style, but to make a great scene with him. Right. Not being disrespect, though. Listen to him, but at the same time, give people in America a good time. Are you happy that you took the piss out of that song? English, not my first language, as you can tell. But, um... When you first learn English, if you don't understand, your answer has to be either yes or no. But I really didn't want to say no to Steven Tyler. What is that? I mean, you told him, right? You oh. showed him, you told him. Oh, yeah. If I knew what he was trying to say, then I, I would have explained myself. Yeah. On Jimmy, Jimmy has his own opinion. He's a big shot in this industry. But, you know, I have my perspective. And if I can go back to time, I won't change a thing. With the competition behind you and, and who knows what in front of you, is there part of you that thinks, well, yeah, maybe I could be a star? People actually start this competition believing themselves, and at the end of the day, when they get kicked off, they start doubting themselves. But I start off this competition doubting myself, now I'm believing myself. So I'm, I'm thinking, I don't, I don't know if it necessarily has to be a star, but I'm pretty sure I really want to make a career out of it.